In today's episode of the Pathfinder Presents podcast, I got an interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Heidi Hamilton, and she is hailing over from the team over at Cyber Patient. And it's a very interesting product. Uh, we we love to pick out sort of unique approaches uh, here at Pathfinder in the, in the podcast to also learn how marketers think about it. But today we're really talking about an interesting product. It's a safe and diverse virtual training hospital, essentially available twenty four seven. So we're going to deep dive into what that actually really means and Heidi is the chief marketing and sales officer for cyber patient today we want to learn how she's thinking about growth for the company so welcome to the show thank you Lucas happy to be here sure yeah so maybe give people a brief overview what is cyber patient all about in your own words okay well cyber patient is actually a product of interactive health international um, and we're a digital technology development company focused on medical and health education sector uh, most importantly, Lucas, our mission is to revolutionize medical education. And so we do this by focusing on closing the gap that exists between the theory and the practice of medicine. Um, and we do this through products like Cyber Patient, which we just launched in the market in 2021. So we technically still a, a startup or early growth stage company, right? So, um, and Cyber Patient is, you rightly mentioned, it's a virtual training hospital that's available on demand 24-7 for medical students to practice their clinical skills from the first patient contact right through to the continuum of care. And really it's developed to grow the confidence um, of medical and nursing students and their decision-making ability um, in any virtual hospital free of any stress and fear. So if you consider uh, medical students, they come out, they have the opportunity to both, um, you know, immediately practice on live patients um, now, that creates a, a lot of um, risk all around, but it also really erodes their confidence. And the idea is to give them an environment where they can, frankly, fail continuously, <laughs> where nobody's getting hurt. So it's a very safe environment. There are a number of other means to do this, standardized patient with actors, as well as mannequins, but that takes a lot of logistics and a lot of cost. So this is an immediately available anytime, anyway, um, approach to improving medical education and hence the health and safety of our of our our health system frankly yeah and what would you say which types of organizations benefit the most like is there a certain size that you know this type of training sort of infrastructure becomes relevant certain amount of em employees like student like what are the institutions looking like that you know benefit the most so our our target um market at this point for cyber patients specifically, I mean, we have other uh, products in our portfolio, but for cyber patients specifically, it's um, medical education institutions. So universities, medical universities and nursing um, universities. Um, and so, you know, really it doesn't matter on the number of students where this does really support is in quite remote regions where they don't always have access to um, the ability to do clinical practice. That's where it's very powerful. So our, our primary target demographic is any university, any medical university that really wants to prepare their, their, their students better for clinical practice and being in the real world. But that is our, our key target audience at this point. Makes sense. And how do these, you know, decision makers in the universities, how do they learn about you guys? Like, how would you describe their their journey? Maybe what are the channels that they're, you know, tapping into to get to know you guys? You know, this is an it's um it's it's an academic environment, so it's a somewhat unique environment. And the um, academic institutions we started from ground zero. So we have a number of approaches. We have a grassroots level where there's student engagement. We have a summer school, the Cyber Patient Clinic Club, where we provided access to students. In fact, during COVID, we provided access to every medical student for free, mm -hmm. just so that they had the opportunity. And as a result, um, we, you know, faculty, educational institutions have, have got to hear from us, as well as referral, being the academic world, we're particularly proud of our founder, um, Dr. Karim Kuyami. Kuyayumi. He's an educator and a UBC professor and respected cardiothoracic surgeon. So, you know, he has a lot of personal connections. He's well respected. Um, the academic community. So how they found us, we deliver papers. Um, everything's very scientific, very um, what they would call evidence-based. Mm -hmm. So 
we present papers at conferences. Um, we invite expert, um, we have an expert series. We invite faculty to present to the students. So it's very much, an, you know, as I say, scientific based, um, proving to the academic community that this is going to actually have an impact on improved results with their, with their learners um, and better prepare them. But the way they actually reach us is through delivering papers, scientific research, um, as well as some, our marketing team is amazing, led by uh, Catherine Kommerbach, who's our, our head of digital strategy, um, outbound initiatives that we do an invitation to expert series. So it's it's a complex um, environment. It's not truly going to the, um, you know, the head of whatever. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. about getting buy-in from faculty and there's multiple in a, in a department. Hmm. And what would you say in that sort of more complex and longer and very trust-based buyer's journey, like what role does the website play? A huge huge role the website is really what i call our point of credibility because we have our research papers we have our um, students come there to engage uh, we have a knowledge base around that and we have continual updates so the our we view our website very much as a means to understand the the evidence and validate that for um, for our our learner community. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That makes a, a whole a, a lot of sense. Now, um, what do you think? Sort of, you know, uh, in very many websites, you know, the website is the goal for like a demo. It's for like a trial. Like, how do you think about that in your case? Like, you know, what 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 is sort of you know a, from a marketing standpoint, like in the, in this particular vertical, like what sort of a call to action or an action that they can do on the website that you found to be, you know, very suitable uh, for their journey. So it's interesting that you say that because, you know, you're right. They need, a lot of them have, we don't call it, um, a lot of need to see, touch and feel your product, right? So that's a really important thing. So how do, how do we facilitate that? How do we make sure that, um, that the institutions are able to do that. And we have what we call an institutional trial. Mm -hmm. um, and the key thing about the institutional trial is that the, and we've plotted this with the buyer's journey, that the institution, it's a data-driven institutional trial. So it provides the opportunity for the institution to pilot cyber patient for a certain period of time we define what those outcomes and objectives need to be as part of that trial and what the success criteria. And then, as I say, that's why it's a data-driven trial because it's evidence-based and then it shows them that this is going to impact their, their students mm -hmm. um, and their learning journey. So, yes, there's our call to action is to invite the institutions to take part um, in our institutional trial, which is a data-driven, evidence-based process. Mm -hmm. makes uh, makes a lot of sense uh, now that we spoke about sort of the product a little bit and, and the way you're thinking about growth for the product i'd love to talk a little bit more about your journey uh, as as a marketer right so the first thing that i'm interested in is considering that there is so much information out there for marketers right so many blogs podcasts articles books um where do you personally find high quality information with all the noise out there you know where do you get those those nuggets and in insights uh, I go back to the basics. Um, I, I think marketing itself is, you know, it's an industry in of itself that markets itself continually. So it's like continual, this trend is happening and you have to do five outreaches and immediate call to action. And, you know, this is the latest best practice. And at the end of the day, for me, best practice is about what is it that my customer, how am I delivering value? And, Primarily, the way I get that information is from my customer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do they want to see? What's going to entice them? Uh, we have an interesting thing because from an academic institution, pre-COVID particularly, we're not talking about necessarily the most technologically advanced. These people are not on TikTok and on all the rest. So, we, so we've had to be innovative around that. So how do we, because we're a technology company, 
and they need to be using the technology for success. So that's been a, a, one of the biggest challenges that we faced. So for me, it's about speaking to our audience, getting that from them. All the other stuff is great, but unless I know that this particular best practice is something that's going to land and work and what my audience wants to see, it becomes just a, a, a hypothetical for me. Yeah, I really, I really, really like that because just adding value into the buyer's journey, truly adding value into the buyer's journey is what it's all about. And I really appreciate you, you know, bringing that uh, into the center. That makes a lot of sense. Now, I got some rapid fire questions as we slowly wrapping up the interview for today to get to know you a little bit better. Are you ready for those? Um, I'd have to be, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> what is uh, the last book that you read? Um, well, I don't know about the last, but I'm currently reading Positive Intelligence by Shazad Shamin. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but um, which I'm finding absolutely fascinating. I, I follow great leadership um, practices, and that for me is is where my focus is in, in my reading. From a fictional point of view, I love uh, fantasy. And so Brandon Sanderson was the last book I read there. But <laughs> Okay. So what is one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? Um, what we're focused on the most is building, interestingly enough, that customer success and customer success journey. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we've got to, we, we've got customers that are currently going, okay, we'll pilot this. So how do we make that a success to ensure that we, we build and we continually have, you know, going towards annual recurring revenue and multi-year contracts, which is where we're heading to, to serve these clients. So that for me is our biggest focus is making sure that we've got the customer journey down. And that's not just from enticing them, that's throughout the entire process, institutional trial to delivering the service that we do. I would say that that's everything is focused around that right now. Gotcha. If there would be no boundaries in tech, what would you say would be the one thing that you would fix for your role as a marketer? If there were no boundaries in tech. You got a magic wand, oh, basically. Oh, just give me all the data and what it means. Just give me the data. Just give me the data that I can. Um, and then with the conversation that, I, as I said, I've got my intuition, I've got the data, and then I've got the customer. If I had something that I could look at all three of those and bring those together, that would be my ultimate Mm -hmm. very cool now uh, i want to do a little bit of time travel with you right let's go back to the days of royal Rhodes university so the mba oh, getting okay. out back into sort of you know more marketing and business oriented positions what's the one advice you would give yourself heading out of uh, the mba program heading into you know continually actually heading into the marketing world um well a bit like closing between oh beg your pardon closing the gap between theory and practice for me is exactly that, right? For me, the power of the MBA was in the fact that I actually got to speak to really clever people <laughs> that had been there and done that. So the papers and the cases and all that were fabulous. But once you're talking to the people say, well, this is my real experience, experience that was the power. So using that, making sure you never lose sight of this, this theory and there's best practice, but you know, keep talking to the cleverer people. <laughs> very good that makes a whole lot of sense Heidi I really appreciate you took the time with us today to be a guest on Pathfinder Presents I want to give you the very last word if somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about cyber patient what's the one thing people should remember oh well that's pretty easy I just want you to watch out for us and know that we are going to be revolutionizing medical education that's all you need to know about us we will be revolutionizing medical education thanks a lot for being a guest on Pathfinder Presents Thanks for your time, Lucas.